Good morning, class. Good morning, Good morning class. Let's all stand up and pray. St. Thomas Aquinas. Thank you. Uh, before we you go to your seat, please maintain the cleanliness and please do arrange the chairs. Okay, thank you. So, Jonna, do we have absent today? All are present. Okay, thank you. So, uh, before we proceed to our topic, I will just have to share to you my experience while I'm uh, walking uh, in the school. Uh, one old lady, our neighbor, approached me and then um, she asked me if, how am I doing? And then I answered that I'm okay, I'm Lenny. And her face changed. And I know in my heart that Ali um, Lenny is not her real name. And I always saw her, I always see her every day of my life, but then I have this memory lapses. So, anyways, in relation to our topic today, I am going, uh, we are going to read the story that is very much related to our topic. So, this is a very short story. Please read it aloud. Okay, you make one, two, three. In a bizarre case involving eyewitness testimony. Australian psychologist Donald Thompson will say by the fact that the person cannot be in two places at once. One night, Thompson was a guest at an Australian talk to about eyewitness testimony. Thompson argued that eyewitness testimony is very reliable because few eyewitnesses notice and remember specific features of space. Later, a woman who had been assaulted and robbed while watching him casually identified Thompson as the suspect. Fortunately for Thompson, the show had been broadcast live and he had many witnesses to support the alibi. It turns out that this accuser had remembered Thompson's face instead of the face of her Okay, so do you think that this story simply implies a simply implies us that there is a rare and unusual human error in our memory? Or is a uh, human error in our memory is very useful to us? So these are the different questions that we are going to answer in our topic today. So before that, I'm going to give you an activity just to measure your memory, show your short term shorter memory. Okay, so take a look at this photo and try to memorize as many uh, images as you can see. Okay. So little look what letters do you make? Uh, do you remember? Okay. Uh, you got seven correct letters. What about you, Pa? E X P A W U G A. Okay. So all of what you said are correct. Okay. So in relation to that, I think you have a um, you have an idea what our topic is going to be about. So our topic for today is memory. But in order for us to have a memory, or for our, for order to us to have this um, so-called memory. What must occur, or what are the classes involved in the complete succession of memory? So, these are the three classes involved in memory. Do you have any idea what is the first step? So, the first step is encoding. Who among you have uh, experience using computer? Okay. I bet all of you have. Okay, so this is um, much like similar to encoding, but encoding in memory is much more complicated. Okay, so let's define what is encoding. Okay, so this is the transforming of information into a form that can be stored into memory. 
just what like you did into your Facebook account. You type in your name, your email address. So that is encoding. Okay. So the second step in the memory process is called. So this one is storage. Just like a flash drive or a memory card. So storage, this is the second step in the process of remembering. It involves in keeping or maintaining information in memory. So for example, I already know that her name is Cell. So I already encoded in my memory that her name is Cell. So for me to be able to, when I saw her or when I see her, it involves storage in my mind that this bird is named Cell. Okay, so that is storage. And then the third process in the the process of your memory is the retrieval. So retrieval. So this is the process of remembering or bringing up information into memory. Okay, so you input or you encode the memory, the names, the feelings, the emotion you remember, and then. You have to store it into your brain, into your long-term or short-term short -term memory, and then you have to retrieve it. When the day or the minute comes that you have to um, identify it again or recognize it again. So this is these are the processes involved in memory. Okay. Um, can we repeat it? Okay. Storage. Okay. So. For us to be able to get a good exercise on your memory, I will give you an activity. So again, just um, just take a look at the pictures and the numbers, and then I will ask you a different questions. Okay, so. What letter represents a crying face? Um, okay, I think Lyndon has a different answer. Thank you, Pablo. Okay, letter D has the crying face. Okay, what about the face? Uh, what about the a uh, let letter represented by a happy face. Okay, cell. Okay, good cell. So these are the correct answers. Okay. Another one. Try to memorize as many numbers as you can. Okay. So, Jana, can you give us some numbers that you remember? Um, 3, 8, 7, 1. Okay, what about uh, Cell? 5, 3, 5, 3, 0. Lindon? Uh, 8, 3, 0, 5, 1. Um? 1, 8, 3, 0, 5, 3, 0. Okay, so, commonly, uh, the usual number that we can remember is 7 digits. So, if you can remember more than that, you have a great memory. So the last exercise is one. Can you get a piece of paper? This is a time tested um, quiz on memory. So take a look at the images. Alright. Okay, so first question, just write it in your paper. What is the color of the flower? Okay. Are you done? How many vowels do you see? Done? Okay. Third is to what direction is the arrow pointing? And then the fourth, 
What animal is in white and black? And the last question is, how many feet do you see in the image? How many feet do you see in the image? Okay, are you done? You may pass your paper now. Thank you, class. So, uh, fortunately for you, I will not be giving any homework or assignment because you have to prepare yourself for our final exam. So, can we all stand up now? Let's all praise. Uh, St. Thomas Aquinas. Thank you, class. And have a good day. Bye, man. Bye, man.